Hey guys, it's Ashley with AA Horsemanship. I'm super excited. I am coming back with the how-to videos and today's video is going to be feet handling. I know fairies are saying holla freaking luya because this is the number one thing that most horses probably have a problem with. Um, it's on the top five list, um, really top three list of problems that horses encounter. And um, a lot of farriers, you know, have to deal with the struggle or worry about getting kicked and everything. So this is going to help prepare your horse for a farrier. So yeah, so let's get started. So that video before, I was basically showing you that um, some basics that you need is your horse should already know how to be desensitized. Um, so right there, I was just making sure she was good with her legs being desensitized. Now I'm going to show you day one as far as rubbing up and down her legs with the rope. So whenever you start a horse, you never want them to be fresh out of the pasture, meaning they should already be using the thinking side of the brain. You should have them a little bit tired. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to move my horse's feet forwards, backwards, left and right. So here you're going to see I'm just making her kind of lunge around me. I'm not making her lunge to um, get tired. It's, it's more of a respect me, get your thinking side going. I'm not going to sit here for 20 minutes lunging my horse. That's not, that's not what I'm doing. So see how she's reacting rather than turning. That tells me right now she's not thinking. So if I were to start just rubbing up and down her legs right here, there's a probability that I'm going to get kicked. She's going to move, things like that. Because this horse is super, super bad about kicking, um, especially with her back feet. The previous foster horse, um, those that don't know you, this is um, Blue Bonnet Training Challenge Horse Treasure. And the foster home that she was at, they said that they had to sedate her and she still put up a fight for the farrier. And as a trainer, I'm not going to do that. This horse needs to st stand there falling asleep and the farrier think, holla freaking Luya, thank you. And most likely I'm actually going to trim her myself. So uh, if I'm trimming it myself, you can bet your bottom dollar this horse is going to be freaking broke. Because I'm not going to get under this horse and worry is she going to kick me is she going to bite me kind of thing so i want my horse to basically learn that she can fall asleep and messing with her feet is the most relaxing thing in the world all right so let's go back to how we do this so i'm basically getting her kind of tired making her want to crave that rest what's rest is me touching her legs so here i'm actually throwing the rope around her legs making sure she's not going to move make sure she's not flinching make sure she's not lifting up any legs so that's good there. Then I'm going to actually move to where I rub up and down her legs. So let me go ahead and fast forward to that. So of course you want to do the other side too. Um, just to save time, I'm going to just jump right into it. So I'm just going to take my rope around her leg. If you're worried that your horse is going to paw at you, rear up, anything like that, you can toss it and use your leg to kind of grab it and I'll show you how to do that later. So basically I'm taking my rope and I'm just moving side to side with it around her leg. And I'm making sure there's no oh no spots. I'm making sure she's not lifting her leg up. A lot of people say, oh well, my horse just picks it up when you touch it. Well, that's not what I'm looking for. I want to know that my horse picks up her foot when I ask her to pick it up. Because if you were to put boots on your horse or things like that, if anybody's ever put like leg their legacy boots on their horses or did like an ice wrap or anything, and they, they think their cue is when you rub down their leg, and that's not the cue at all. So if you had a judge, you know, coming over there, you're going to get points taken off, you know, if they ever were rubbing down to just feel things. And it's a lot harder for, like, vets to check things. So you want the cue to be either some people grab the chestnut, some people don't. Um, whatever your cue is that you want to teach your horse, that's what you are wanting her to pick the foot up. So um, that's, you're basically making her just stand still, keep her leg down, things like that. You don't rest until she shows five signs of relaxing, one of those five signs. And that's um, cocking her leg, licking her lips, blinking her eyes, taking a deep breath, or lowering her head. And Or if she doesn't show any of those, she needs to stand still for at least 15 seconds. So here, um, I'm working on the back leg. And um, this is the one that I'm also, I'm very careful around with any horse because a lot of power comes from their hind end. So I'd rather just swing that rope around and then use my foot to grab it so I can get out of the way if I need to. Um, here she's moving around a lot so I should have just went ahead and made her move her hindquarters and kind of said you want to move let's move and then go back to desensitizing and teach her that that's rest. Um, I did it later on and of course the camera died so you didn't see it so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to when I get it around and that way we're not sitting here forever watching me struggle here. 
All right, so I'm just tossing it, it goes through. Now watch what my foot does. So I'm not in trouble, I'm just taking my foot and scooting it. So that way you have enough room, you know, her head's tipped a little bit, you have enough room to get out of the way if you need to. You need to be careful because horses have the fastest reaction time and it takes just a quick second for them to just pop their foot right up there and they'll kick you. So make sure you're standing at a good angle and you're being safe with where you're standing. So I have it wrapped around and I'm just going to shake, shake, shake. See how she's a little uncomfortable with that she's moving? I'm just going to keep holding it in the position that she's moving at. So this is right by her pastern area and um, she doesn't like it. So I'm just going to keep shaking it there. And it's not like a stiff shake to where you're giving her rope burn. I'm making my rope really loose and it's just like a side to side. So it's just like barely touching your um, leg there and this is basically I'm acting like I'm using my hand but this is a safer way of approaching so I'm not in the way where my head's not going to get kicked I'm not going to get kicked kind of thing it's going to be more of the rope now um, I do have a 14 foot lead rope on her I do recommend that you have at least a 14 foot to do this because if you have less then you're closer to your horse and you're pulling on her head and you're pulling on her leg and it's just not going to work out as well. If you have a longer lead rope, chances are you're going to have so much mess to mess with. She's going to get tripped up. You're going to get tripped up. So I really recommend having a 14 foot lead. Um, that's just the perfect size all around. Um, definitely wouldn't want anything more than 20 foot um, as far as getting tripped. If you have to, then you have to, but you just need to be wary of pulling on her and things like that. Okay, so we're going to wait for her to relax there. She's still moving. So this is one of the things about desensitizing, and I'll do a video on how to desensitize your horse. If you were to release the pressure here while she's moving, she's not learning to stand still and relax. She's learning that she's getting away with it by moving. So it's more, she would learn more of sensitizing rather than desensitizing. So here we're just going to keep going until she stands still, stands still and shows five signs of relaxing. Those five signs include uh, taking a deep breath, licking their lips, cocking their back leg, um, blinking their eyes, and lowering their head. And of course, if they don't show any of those, then if they stand still and for 15 seconds. So that's kind of what you're looking for. Once she's calmed down with that, then I'm actually going to rub up higher. So now I'm going up higher on her leg there. And then I go back down. Why do you go back down? Well, you want to make sure that you can approach and retreat. You want to make sure, yeah, she stood still while you were continuously rubbing it. But what happens when you go up and then back down? Is she going to still allow it? So see how she's kind of picking that leg up like, I don't know about this. you got to go back and fix it. I'd much rather my rope be there than my face be there. Now the other thing is too, is whenever I do continue going up higher, I'm not stopping by her hawk, I'm going all the way up. Um, a lot of people are like, well I don't understand why you're doing that, you don't rub up that high. Well, your barrier, when they're doing work, they're going to be right in that area and your ho if your horse has never been touched there, chances are they're going to kick when you touch right that in that area. Especially this horse, she's very sensitive around that area. And no, that's not fly. She's not very happy with me touching her hind legs. So that's just something that's going to have to come away with more training. We call it sassiness. Okay, so now we're up towards our hawk and going down. So you can see the slack in that rope there. And it's just up and down. Work your way all the way to the top. When you find an oh no spot, like right there, just keep it going. And even if, you know, if she's nervous just touching it and you're not even like swaying back and forth, that's fine too. Just hold it there. You know, like do what you can without rewarding her moving. You just don't want to like take the rope completely away. Of course, if she's like freaking out and she took off, you can't really help that. Just act like nothing happened and go back to doing it. You wouldn't want that to happen, but if it did, it's not the end of the world. It's just going to be a lot harder to fix it. So 
So see, I'm way up there, as far as that rope can go up. And see her legs cocked, her head's bent, she's lowering her head, she's blinking her eyes. You can't see it in this video, but she was um, licking and chewing. That's so much more improvement already for just day one. And so now from here, you know, I'm of course going to do the other side. I think my camera quit on me before it got to the other side, but, uh, you know, you're just going to do the same thing you did on that side. And from here on, you know, this was day one. So after this, you know, I lunged her a little bit more, taught her different things. I got the saddle on. Um, every time I did any sensitizing, meaning I made her move her feet and made her move away from pressure, I would always go back to desensitizing, and desensitizing was desensitizing her legs to being handled with a rope. Um, tomorrow I'll be doing something different. Um, I'm hoping to get these videos out day by day. However, I can't make any promises because of how busy I am. Um, it might be like once a week kind of thing. So I do apologize, you know, if it takes a long time to get these. But you'll get to see different improvements and... Um, Hopefully, this typically takes about a week to get your horse ready to be for a farrier if you are consistent with it. So hopefully her feet will be trimmed and I'll get a video of that. And if you're interested in adopting her, there is information on um, her as well as how to get it approved for adoption, the event that's taking place. Um, I'd love to see you guys come out and support us. Um, we're going to be selling t-shirts and everything, so it's a really awesome event. And tons and tons of rescue horses are going to be there and this year they are super pretty there's some buckskin there's bays there's blacks there's palominos i mean the all the colors are there it's they're gorgeous horses that are going to be available and they're all at steel prices like her adoption fee is 1500 and last year i don't know if they're going to do it this year but last year they did it half off at the event so if that in that case you're going to have a horse for 750 dollars, and she's with me for um from June to October, end of October. So there's lots of training going on there. I'm super excited. And yeah, so if you're interested, information's below. And you'll know what to do. If you like the video, thumbs up. Comment below what you like, what you dislike. Um, any ideas you have, make sure to follow the links. Check out our website. And thank you all so much. And if you haven't already, join the family and subscribe.